Today's video is by request from a fellow amateur radio operator. He sent me an email a few weeks ago saying he was getting interfered with from a local Digipeter and that Digipeter was using these Alinko DR135 Mark III transceivers. And He said that whenever this transceiver keyed up he was getting interference in his low power single sideband work on the low end of two meters. So he did a couple of tests uh, with these DR135s and he, he found that they had some instability in their output frequency uh, that was measurable uh, and was causing interference uh, before these transceivers would finally settle out to their assigned frequency. So he asked me to take a look at it and verify and validate his results and make a little video. So that's what we're going to do today. So our setup today is the radio under test. In fact, he sent me two of these because uh, the repeater operator bought another one figuring the one he had was faulty and that one's doing the same thing. So we think it might be a design issue with these uh, Alinko DR135 Mark III's. So the transceiver's RF output is going through this Bird 4431 uh, watt meter and then the output of that is going down to a dummy load that's down below my desk. This watt meter has got an RF sampler built in. The sampling port is right here. And I've got that wired into a Tektronix RSA 306 real-time spectrum analyzer that we'll be controlling with this PC over here. Of course, the RSA can do real-time spectrum analysis, performing tens of thousands of spectrums per second and showing me the results over here on this display. And we can also use it to capture RF over time to capture the startup transient and look at the power variation over time as well as the frequency and spectral variation over time and even measure the settling time or in other words how long it takes this transceiver to settle to within say plus or minus five kilohertz of the final frequency. The analyzer set up with a center frequency of 146.52 and a 40 megahertz span so each division uh, represents 4 megahertz. So now let's take a look at what happens when I key the transmitter. You can actually see if we look carefully that the spectrum during key up is uh, splattering a good 4 or 5 megahertz above the desired frequency and then close to 4 megahertz below the desired frequency. Now there is some transient activity uh, during key down when I let go of the uh, uh, PTT but that's considerably lower in power and doesn't last as long, so I'm not as worried about that. But the transient that we see uh, during key up, and this is at high power, is pretty significant. So now let's change to uh, medium power here and take a look at the transmit characteristic then. Here I go, key up. Looks like I'm seeing about the same excursion, but also see some power variation as well. I can see that the, the peak of the power it was coming up uh, you know, a couple of dB higher than the final settled power, particularly when we're going to this upper frequency, which is even outside of the 2 meter uh, amateur radio band. I've now got the rig set to low power, and let's key up and look at it again. And uh, we're seeing about the same excursion. Uh, the power spike is occurring on the low frequency side instead of the high frequency side this time, but we're still seeing that same uh, pretty broad, you know, several megahertz excursion on either side of the uh, set frequency of 146.52. So let's take a deeper look at what's going on here. So I've set up the analyzer now to capture the transient activity. So we still have the real-time spectrum display down here in the lower right corner. Uh, the display next to it is showing me uh, output power versus time. Uh, and then uh, the trace above that is showing me, the two traces above that here are showing the frequency deviation versus time and essentially the same trace but with a measurement turned on to give me the settling time uh, to settle within plus or minus five kilohertz of center frequency. Uh, I've also captured a spectrogram or a waterfall plot that's showing the spectral transient again with uh, no gaps in it, just a seamless spectrogram and then a spectrum plot just above that. So the rig is still set to low power and uh, I'm just keying it up here to capture you know, the transient activity. Uh, we can actually see the transient activity in the DPX display down here and then uh, the seamless captured time domain activity in the other displays. Uh, we can see the spectral activity here and as I move this marker up and down we can actually see the spectrum above it as I yank that spectrum out of this seamless spectrogram. You can also see the marker moving along 
in the amplitude versus time, so this is actually output power versus time. And then these two plots again showing frequency deviation versus time. And we can see, for example, that uh, at this low power setting, uh, we're getting a pretty significant, uh, probably at least 5 or 6 dB of overshoot in power when the thing keys up here as well, in addition to the significant frequency transients. So if we take a look at the kind of the peak of this, this one transient here, uh, at our highest, highest level here, let's go to about where we're at full power, we're sitting over 5 megahertz above our set frequency. As we continue to move through in time, we can see it, it dips down to about 2 megahertz below, and then wiggles around a bit and appears to settle out about here, which is about uh, 30 milliseconds after key up. But we're making actually a measurement here on this display to say when are we within plus or minus 5 kilohertz of center frequency, which is still pretty coarse, and that's taking the better part of you know, nearly 45 milliseconds under this low power setting. So now at the mid power setting, we'll key up again, do this a couple of times, grab uh, some of these transients and take a look at the activity. And we can actually see that uh, the amount of power variation is a little bit less, a little bit of less headroom of course, but the frequency transient looks like it might actually be a little bit worse. We kind of find our, our peak transient over here. Uh, again, we're about 5, 5.2 megahertz above, and then uh, going again about 2 megahertz below. And now it's taking, you know, looks like we're settled to within, you know, here at about 40 or 50 milliseconds out, but the actual measurement is closer to, you know, 68 or 69 milliseconds before we settle the final frequency. And finally, let's just switch to high power here and key up again and take a look at the high power characteristic. And uh, we can actually see the power variation isn't as, as wild because certainly there isn't enough headroom left anymore in the PA. And the frequency transient though is still about the same. So let's see if the other radio behaves the same way. But this is, uh, this is pretty bad and would certainly cause a lot of interference, particularly if this radio is keyed up and down uh, often like a digipeter uh, typically is. So let's look at the other radio. Okay, so now this is the second uh, DR135 Mark II, also on high power, and we'll key it up, and then we can just visually see any changes here uh, in these displays. They haven't changed that much. The, uh, the peak excursion uh, of frequency here, you know, about 5.3 megahertz. On the low side, about 1.5 to, well, still close to 2 megahertz going down below. And it looks like it's settled a little bit faster, you know, 65 milliseconds close, instead of close to 70. But let's go down and check the other power levels here. So here's the mid power level. Let's capture that one. And again, let these displays update. Very little change in the frequency settling behavior, but certainly a lot of power, power variation when we first key up here as well. Still taking 66 milliseconds to settle. And let's go to the low power setting and key up the low power setting here and take a look at these display, as these displays update here. Very different uh, frequency uh, transient characteristic here. Uh, doesn't have that uh, that large overshoot anymore, but now a much a much lower uh, over, uh, undershoot, if you will, in frequency here. Let's do this key up one more time here, just to see if this uh, operation is pretty consistent. Yeah, so for this radio at low power, it doesn't uh, go as high in frequency, but the medium and high power settings certainly uh, are not very nice. All right, so next up, I've got an old Kenwood TM231A, a two meter transceiver also set to the same frequency. Let's cue it up and take a look and see what it looks like. Well, I really don't see any activity in the real-time display here at all in terms of transient activity or uh, unusual activity here. And uh, as we can see from the power, uh, the output power, it's pretty steady when it first comes on. Frequency versus time, once the power comes up here, like let's, let's, let's bring this marker uh, over to you know, about where the power is kind of full power. And this thing is just rock steady at its desired frequency. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of different power levels here. And uh, so there's the high power level. It's about 45 watts. Let's see what that one looks like on this displays update. Again, no wild transient variation. The power takes a little bit of time here to come up. Just ramps up nice and smooth. No overshoot, no ringing, and no transient in that frequency characteristic. So. Certainly those uh, Alinko DR-135s behave a lot differently than this old Kenwood. 
I've got an old ICOM here. Let's take a look at that one as well. But I've got my old ICOM IC2410H and uh, again 146.52. Let's key this one up here. And I, again, I don't see anything unusual in the real-time display here when I key up. The power comes up nice and smooth and there's no appreciable frequency transient as we come up. We can see the spectrogram is a nice clean straight line. So these two transceivers don't have the same problem that the Olinko seems to have. Yeah, so bottom line here, it certainly appears that these uh, Olinko DR135 Mark II or Mark III transceivers have definitely got a design issue uh, with their frequency stability uh, when they key up, taking you know, more than 50 milliseconds, sometimes close to you know 70 milliseconds, to settle to within even just five or kilohertz or so of the set frequency. And that can certainly uh, cause interference and distortion uh, in other adjacent uh, uh, radio frequency operation and see, certainly even transmit uh, potentially for some small period of time out of uh, the allocated 2 meter FM uh, frequency bands. So I think it's something that uh, you know, hopefully Alinko will address in the future. Anyway, if you like the video, uh, give me a thumbs up. Thanks again as always uh, for watching. If you have any questions or comments, certainly uh, please leave them below. I'd be happy to try to address them. Thanks again as always for watching.